Now on Face the State, the pandemic continues with no end in sight. President Trump is being called out by Democrats for the way he's handling the coronavirus crisis. We'll talk with Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy about what he believes needs to be done. Also, it's back to school, but is Connecticut ready? We're joined by Trinity College President Joanne Berger Sweeney. Plus, remembering former candidate for governor Oz Griebel. We'll talk about his life and legacy with one of his closest friends, former WFSB general manager Chris Roars. It's all straight ahead on Face This Date this Sunday, August 9th, 2020. From Eyewitness News, Connecticut's most watched local political program, this is Face the State. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for Face the State. It's 830. I'm Dennis House. We begin today with COVID-19 and its impact on Connecticut. We'll be joined by Senator Chris Murphy in just a moment, but let's begin with the president of Trinity College, Joanne Berger Sweeney. And President Berger Sweeney, thanks for being with us here today. Thank you for inviting me, Dennis. It's nice to be here. Good to have you, and we hope to have you in person one of these days as soon as these COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. Let's begin with the fall semester. What kind of plan does Trinity have in place to welcome students back? Right. So Trinity is planning to welcome back up to 1,700 students on campus. This fall, we have planned really thoughtfully. We chose that number because that's the number of students that we can accommodate in individual rooms. Knowing that it's gonna be a stressful time, we thought it was important that each student could go back behind closed doors to an individual room, which is how we help select that number. What about those who cannot find on-campus housing now because of that? Right, so we are trying to help some of our students find off-campus housing if necessary, but given the pandemic and its spread throughout the country, quite a few of our students will probably not be able to come back to campus physically. So we will of course have a combination of courses, at least this is our plan, in-person, hybrid, and then some that are solely remote. That way we can accommodate students who may not be able to come physically to campus. As you know, Trinity is pretty expensive to attend there and to board. For those students who aren't living on campus, are they still paying mm -hmm. that tuition, the same tuition as the students who are on campus? Yes, we decided to accommodate the current financial situation by not raising our tuition. But if you think about it, the things that we offer when we are physically here are most of the things that we are offering when we are online. It's not just your instruction with your professor and those costs haven't changed, but also our students can make themselves, or can avail themselves to our mental health services, our healthcare services, our career services, all of those will continue to be in place. And that is really the cost of the tuition. Have, you had, any, have you had any students asking. decide that they're just not gonna come back because of it? Honestly, very few. Um, we were overwhelmed by how many of the students registered for courses the day that we opened up registration. Um, we thought that there might be more of a fall off on students, but stop and consider right now what their alternatives are. They don't want to necessarily, you know, sit at home, not engage with their peers in an education. So um, we have been very pleased with the response. What about gatherings on campus? Is there a limit as to how many people can get together? And if you see a large yeah. crowd, what will the Trinity College Security Department do about it? Yes. So we have sent a contract, you know, to our students, kind of a conduct code that we expect people to follow when they arrive here. We will not have large social gatherings. There will be a maximum. We've informed people of 25 people who can get together outside and 10 people inside. Um, we also have shared what the consequences of not following those rules will be. What will the consequences be? Um, you know, depending on how often and the degree to which 
um, someone violated our policies, they can be everything from um, a stern warning all the way through, um, you know, removing those individuals from campus. We have to take it seriously if we're going to keep our own community safe and then the greater Hartford community safe. We can't play around with those. Speaking about the issues. greater Hartford community, as you know, many students go off campus to restaurants and bars and things like that, stores. How will you police where they go on the weekend? Right. Well, we will provide instructions, recommend, making recommendations to students and, um, you know, leaving campus. We are going to have to trust them to, if they go off campus, follow simple health and safety protocols, wear masks, what happens stay if, physically distanced. What happens if a student comes down with COVID-19? What happens to right. him or her? Are they, did they remain on campus? Um, so we do have the ability to quarantine and isolate a number of students if they become infected with COVID. We have a very um, strict testing protocol for our students. When they first arrive, we will be testing students twice a week so that we can monitor, and that's called surveillance testing for COVID. We will do the same for our employees once a week. So we will be able to monitor and see how and whether COVID is spreading in our campus. Then if someone is identified with COVID, they will go into quarantine. So we have special um, places set aside on our campus that will be quarantine and isolation facilities. And very briefly, what is the mask policy on campus in terms of going into these communal bathrooms and the gym and the theater and dormitory? Mask everywhere all the time. In some ways that makes it easy to monitor. And we're also going to ask anyone who comes through our campus, because sometimes people walk through, they will also be asked um, to wear masks. President of Trinity College, Joanne Berger Sweeney, we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Let's all keep healthy and safe and uh, continue the positive direction in which Connecticut is moving. Words to live by and best of luck with the Bantam community this coming fall. When we come back, we'll talk with U.S. Senator Chris Murphy about President Trump and how he believes the president is handling the COVID-19 crisis. We welcome your comments on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But you can also watch past editions of Face the State right now on our YouTube channel or on our app.